We've been making documentaries about gangs around the world, and that came about by fluke. I met a guy who'd been shot, who was a member of the Bloods, who'd been shot 27 times, and I didn't believe anyone could be shot 27 times. So when I met him, and found out that he had been shot that many times, quite fascinating. And the fact that if he'd been born maybe 15 blocks north or south, he probably wouldn't have ended up becoming a member of the Bloods. And he was the antithesis of, of what we were seeing on MTV. I, he did not have a blonde, big-breasted wife. He had uh, a very large black wife with two babies on either hip, a block toilet, and was living in virtual poverty. So took the glamour out of it slightly from what I was seeing on MTV. Um, and I thought, well, we can make programs about that. And eventually, after 26 gang programs, the war in Afghanistan was happening. So I went out there and made 15 documentaries there over a space of five years was out with the US Marine Corps uh, once while I was doing it. I spent a lot of time with the three-star general. He was a great guy. Um, most of the time I was with the um, British forces, the Royal Marines, and with my family regiment, um, the Royal Anglians. Um, and it just, it just felt that we'd amassed enough knowledge in terms of a very small team at Freshwater, which is my very small production company, to to ta tackle some some big things. So the first film we made of Extreme War was in Juarez, and it was obviously five years ago when there was particularly one at the height of, of the killings. Um, and quite a shocking film, I have to say. And you know, four people were getting killed on the hour um, at that time. And we sort of dealt with that, and we, we got home and, and we edited it, and it made sense, and it got good figures. So it was a natural progression to carry on looking at issues around the world. So topics from, you know, the Congo and the DRC to um, conflicts all around the world. So there's no shortage of subject matter. Um, um, as you said, we've just made a, one of the films in this series. Uh, it was looking at the supposed war that, that, that Donald Trump wanted to build at one point um, across the United States southern border. Um, and the practicalities of that geographically, financially, physically, and also whether walls work or not. Um, you know, as I said, there's no shortage of subject matters. Uh, we, we went in that same series. We went to Mongolia and looked at the right, rise of the far right, Mongolian Nazis, believe it or not, and the full regalia, Zeke Heiling. Um, where I went to Mozambique and looked at the ivory trade, um, the fact that there's a growing demand for ivory. Uh, if elephants are slaughtered at the present rate, five years' time, there won't be any elephants in Africa. But also the locals there turned around to me when I talked to them about elephants, and they said, well, there's plenty of elephants in the United States of America. There's plenty of elephants in Europe. Why do we have them? They're a menace. They eat our crops. And then that village alone, they'd killed four elephants in five months. The guns being handed to them by the government, and the government would take the bush meat and, and the ivory and sell it. And mainly the reason for the ivory demand is the burgeoning middle classes in China. It's only pure ornament, or, you know, ornament value. There's no supposed medical benefit to it. It's just so you can have a piece of elephant tusk in your, in your, in your lounge. So very, very varied subjects. Um, obviously, we were, in, we were in Iraq and Syria with the Kurds. I think we're the only um, TV crew, documentary team, journalists, reporters of any kind that got onto the west bank of the Euphrates before the uh, Turks came south and pushed the Kurds back over the Euphrates. Um, uh, we've, I've recently been to Libya and I've just come back from the Philippines. So it's been a busy year. I've been very lucky over the last 10 years um, of making docs, 12, 11, 12 years. Um, work predominantly with Sky, which is an extension of Fox. Um, they have left us to our own devices, quite literally. Um, they have editorial control, obviously, but only if we make preposterous straight statements, which we don't, because we're just reporting what's happening on the ground. Um, so I will go to them with, well, we will go to them with 15 maybe ideas and narrow that down to six docs, sometimes five. And we know that if we look, start working on of those, uh, the six that we'll be looking at making will probably have 12, we'll narrow it down to 12, and naturally some will fall out or we'll get better access. Or for instance, Duterte will announce a war on drugs in the Philippines and we'll go, well, we'll definitely go to the Philippines as the last film because he's 
3,000 people have just been shot dead in 100 days. So we're, we can, towards the end of a series, actually alter course. And one thing I, we sort of insist on in terms of, of the way that we make the films is that we don't write them in an office and then go and try and make them on the ground. We go out there with, with, with the, the statistics and the journalistic knowledge, and then when we're there on the ground, we film what's happening. And I tell you what, I get more, I, I would rather sit in front of an average human being in an extreme situation any day than a politician in an extreme situation, because you're going to get more words of truth from an average person than you're ever going to get from a politician. The most important thing to remember is, is that you're only going there for a short period of time and you are s stepping in the, in, onto their garden, in their garden, and you've got to be careful where you step. And the golden rule f for us has always been that we want to leave it in the same, exactly the same position it was when we first arrived and, and be very mindful of the fact that even when the film goes out, that people's lives can be taken and their families' lives can be taken particularly when you're in countries like Colombia and Mexico uh, and, and, and in Africa. So always very mindful that well, the fixer is the, probably the most important person that you will work with. Then it will be the producer. I'm just a little cog in the middle of all that. Um, and then when you get home, you've got to edit it and make sure it makes sense. But the most I say again, access is king. If you've got great access, then you know, you're an idiot if you can't make a film from it. You know. The most important thing is, is maintaining standards. I think, and I'm a bit awful to say this and very condescending, but you know, I've worked in television for 30 years now, and I would say that because it's just so much of it, it's understandable that the, the, the quality of it has, 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 has dropped off. And I think what's really important if you want someone to watch what you make is to make it look good or realistic or real, um, but also interesting. Um, the subject should be interesting, but it also should visually look stimulating and interesting. And that's why I pay a lot of money to cameramen. <laughs>